morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello my friends, this is Kevin Lopez from Personal Tutors. Today, the chapter that I'm going to explain you is from 7th Standard Honeycomb book and the name is 3 Questions. My friends, you would have gone ahead and read this chapter, understood it. You're, I'm very sure that your teachers would have provided you better solutions. We just are making things easier for you. So let's go ahead and brief, have a brief of the story and three important questions, my friends. These questions, according to people out there, researchers out there, are also the three most important questions in everybody's life, my friends. These three questions should always be taken care of by everyone. This chapter has been instilled in your syllabus to enlighten your minds, to enkindle the knowledge of oneness. So, it starts, one fine day, a certain king, they have not given the name in the chapter, of a certain kingdom, starts thinking about three questions that would make him, a, make him a successful ruler and he would never fail. The three questions that he asks himself is question number one, what is the right time to begin things? Now the question is quite emancipating my friends, what is the right time to begin things? The second question is who are the people he must listen to? This is the second question that he encountered. L like whom he should have around, whom he should be friends with, certain things. And the final question that he asks, what is the most important thing for him to do? Being a king, what is the most important thing for him to do? Now, the king asks his messengers to visit his kingdom and shout out the answers, the questions to the king, to the people who lived in his kingdom, the citizens and whoever would give the best answer would be rewarded handsomely. It happens so that our dear king received overwhelming responses he got so many people out there who came and gave various answers like somebody said what is the right time to do someone said he should keep a diary he should make appointments someone even said that there is no chance for a king to decide what is the right time to do as whatever seems necessary he should do it on his own the second question, who are the people he must listen to? Somebody said he should listen to the Raj Pujaris, that is the, the basic priests in the, in the kingdom. Some of them said his, he should go ahead and listen to even the magician because a magician knows magic and thus they would help the king rule better. And what is the most important thing to do is somebody said research in science, somebody said go for maths, Someone said so many things. Somebody even said the most important thing and the people he should listen to is his army. So these were the replies that were more rhetorical rather than practical. Our dear king was not satisfied with certain replies. Thus, he decides to go and visit a famous sage who used to live in a hut in a nearby forest. But the most important thing here was that the sage met only ordinary men. The sage wasn't interested, the hermit wasn't interested in meeting kings and noblemen and rich people out there. So our dear king here dresses up as an ordinary man and reaches out 
the hermit's hut. At a distance from the hut, he gets down off his horse, leaves it with his bodyguard and walks towards the hermit's hut. While he reaches the hermit's hut, he sees that he is using a plow to dig up a field and make burrows. Now, the king, see, the king sees this fellow, he looks at him, finds him a pretty old man trying to dig in the scorching heat of the sun and panting. The king initially asks the person, I am here to ask the answers to my three questions and thus repeats them. The old man just greets him and again started plowing the field. The king felt pity at him. He saw that he is old, meek, fragile. Thus, the king asked him for his plow and started digging. One, two, when he had dug the second row, the king again asked him, I am here to ask my three questions and I am here to get the answers of them. The hermit simply puts his hand forward and says, now you do some rest, have some rest, take some rest and let me do the working. The king finds it inappropriate and asks the old man to sit down while he's con he continues to dig the field. It happens so that an hour passes, then two and three and suddenly it's evening out there. The sun is almost behind the trees. The line in the chapter, my friend, the sun is behind the trees, depicts the notion of evening approaching, my friends, because usually it is when the sun sets, it starts to get behind the trees, thus giving out long shadows. And so beautifully it is explained over here. We should mind that the author of this story is none other than Leo Tolstoy, the famous thinker, architect, playwright, and so much more. This is a story that has been translated in numerous languages, my friends. Because the moral here itself lies in the story that will be coming ahead. So, when it was almost evening, the king now finally asks the old man, I was here to ask my answers. I was here to get the answers for my questions, sir. Could you please give me the replies so that I may leave? The old man suddenly points at someone coming rushing towards them. It was a bearded guy, strangely dressed up, running towards them, holding his stomach with his hand and he was bleeding. He was holding the wound that was bleeding profusely. The bearded man came to them and the king and the sage immediately took care of him. They consoled him, made him sit in cool breeze under the tree and the person says, the stranger says, can I have something to drink please? So the king rushes out and fetches fresh water for the stranger and later on dresses his wounds and then with the help of the sage, the hermit, he takes him inside the sage's hut and there since it was cool and breezy, the stranger was at ease and he slightly closes his eyes and tries to be at peace and doze off. Our dear king here, my friends, is also tired after the day's long work, soon dozes off 
and sleeps the whole night in the morning now when the king wakes up it takes him a few minutes to realize where exactly he is and what is this strange bearded man lying on the bed besides him doing looking at the king getting up the strange bearded man suddenly apologizes to the king and says forgive me the king is amazed he simply says i find no reason to forgive you what wrong you have done to me because forgiven is usually given to people out there who have done something wrong to you thus here the strange person the stranger explains to king madhya sir i was about to kill you i was about to take a revenge today yesterday it means you are the one who punished my brother and seized all my property thus leaving me homeless and then i decided to take revenge with you when i came to know that you without your bodyguard are going to visit the sage i decided that when you'll be coming back i'll kill you but you did not came back now since you did not come i came out of my hiding place and reached to where your horse was just to be encountered by a bodyguard who hit me hard and thus i was left bleeding if it would not have been you and the sage i would have bled to death but sir in spite of me wanting to kill you you saved my life i promise you to be faithful for the rest of my life and shall serve you and i would make sure and even ask my sons to do that that means the person really was changed thus the king suddenly found it quite amusing to have peace with his enemy the king realized that it was nothing that he did yet his simple acts of kindness changed an enemy into a friend so the stranger goes the king asks him that he would sending some soldiers at his place giving him back his property and will ask the royal physicians to dress up his wound and take care of his health now the king came out to see the old sage sowing some saplings in the burrows that the king had dug yesterday that is the day before the king finally reaches him once again and asks him sir for the final time can i ask the question the answers to my questions the sage replies haven't you got them now the king was amazed because the sage hadn't spoken to him yet how come the king came to know the answers the sage said that the answer to the first question was the question is what is the right time to begin things my friends the right time to begin things according to the sage is now because the present is the moment when you can do things precisely you can think about doing work in the future but it may not be successful you can regret about what you have not done in the past it would not be successful the king saw the sage digging the fields felt pity at him and informed that he would be doing the work instead of the sage 
if the king would not have dug the field he would have gone back annoyed and the stranger would have attacked him so that saved him by his life secondly who are the people he must listen to the king went ahead and heard to the sage and the pleading person the stranger who was about to die so the most important answer here that the sage informed him was you should listen to the people you are with at the moment you the people who are with you are precisely the ones you should listen to you shouldn't be listening to somebody who has whom you have overheard you don't know the facts about it often leads to many conclusions and jumping to conclusions is really bad my friends the final question was what is the most important thing for him to do the most important thing for him to do was that he had done the two things that he felt are the most important at the very moment the first thing he pitied at the sage and took the plow and started digging instead of letting him dig secondly the king instantly attended to the bleeding stranger thus saving him for by his life now the sage says because these are the important things since these are the purposes that we are sent by god to the earth that is to complete the purposes the king really feels happy at this very moment and the chapter concludes some questions that would make the chapter more elaborate for you would be why did the king want to know the answers to the questions the king wanted to know the answers to these three questions because he knew that once he would get the answers to these three questions he would never fail in life being a good king and a ruler requires a lot of things thus he would never fail in his life while judging and ruling messengers were sent throughout the kingdom to do what to fetch wise men to find answers to the question to look for the wise hermit to announce a reward for those who could answer the questions obviously the messengers were sent throughout the kingdom to announce about the reward and the three questions that anyone could answer why was the king advised to go to magicians <laughs> well the king was told that in order to decide the right time to do something was to look in the future <laughs> and it is only the magicians who can look into the future funny isn't it <laughs> he was my friends he was informed about such notions as well in answer to the second question whose advice did the people say would be most important for the king well somebody said that it would be his courtiers whose advice would be important some people said that it would be the doctors some even went ahead and said it is the army of the king that is most important so he should be listening to them what question, what suggestions were made in answer to the third question the third question was what is the most important thing for him to do the answers came in as science somebody said to him about fighting somebody said him that the religious worship is the most important thing that he can do and so on the king was really annoyed at such answers did the wise men win the reward if not why not they did not win any reward because all the answers that they gave were quite vague and impractical according to the king thus the king denied the reward to anyone how did the king and the hermit help the wounded man when the king and the hermit 
So the large wound on the man's stomach, they immediately started nursing him, offered him water, took him inside the hut, dressed him up, addressed him properly, gave him fresh water, even the king went ahead to bring fresh water and thus giving him peace. So this was the way they helped the wounded person, thus saving his life. Who was the bearded man? The bearded man was an enemy of the king whose elder brother had been killed by the king and the property was annexed, that is seized, that is taken over by the king. Thus he, had want, he wanted a revenge and had made up his mind to kill the king. Why did he ask for king's forgiveness? According to the king, my friends, it is a person who was asking him forgiveness to whom the king never knew. Thus the king asked him, I have, you have done nothing wrong to me, so why are you asking for the forgiveness? Then this person explained him that in spite of him wanting to kill the king, the king took a leap and helped him by nursing his wounds, addressing him properly, taking care of him and offering him the precious water that he wanted to drink out of thirst. Thus the person begged, he begged for forgiveness. What the king do to show his forgiveness when he forgave the bearded man? The king immediately offered the bearded man his property back. He offered him assistance of the royal physician and letting his soldiers lead him back to home. So these were the some questions my friends that we have taken care of. To the top left of mine, my friends, you can find the information button. If you click at it, you'll be directed to the playlist of 7 Standard. And to the left, there's an annotation. It would lead you to related videos. So signing off today, this is Kevin Lopez, my friends. Do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.